Okay, so I'm going to step, take a step backwards here so I can show you the table step. So before I did canvas size, right? Right now, what I did is I merged from my timeline all of my animation frames. I flattened those frames into new layers, which Photoshop helpfully labeled frames for me. You can do that as many times as you need. So you just have a nice numbered stack of frames, right? For your animation. It's like a, a deck of cards, each with a different image from my animation on it, right? So these are, think of them as, as screen grabs from your animation. They're film Shit. stills. I am trying to make a final storyboard. I'm trying to pick the best nine of those cards arranged in this way to tell my story as a comic book. And this will be print quality resolution by the time I'm done. So how do I need to do that? Well, I need to go to my image, my image options and go to canvas size. And I need a table. I need to make the piece of paper bigger so I can showcase all of this. And where your dimension was eight inches, I want you to make it 30 inches. And then your other dimension, whether it's eight or whether it's bigger than eight, I want you to quadruple it, right? So the smallest you should have for, for a table is eight by four times eight. So that'd be, or 30 by four times eight, which would be 32. Mine is closer to 11, so it's better to overshoot it because you can always crop down. So I'm gonna do 44 inches. I'm growing my table, my canvas size from the middle. So now my deck of cards is in the middle. And what do I mean by a deck of cards? That's the first one, that's the second one, that's the third one, that's the fourth one, that's the fifth one, sixth one, seventh one, right? So they all have a slightly different picture. I want nine frames to tell my story on my storyboard. So before I can do that, I'm gonna to go to frame one and I'm gonna make little borders for myself using the guides. Now, in order for the guides to stick to your cards, you need to select the frame. And in order to see the guides clearly, I make a new layer, a new empty layer that I say edit fill and I fill it with white so I don't have that checkerboard. And then I move that white behind frame one. Now, if I click on frame one and I move my guides, they'll stick to the sides of my cards. I'm saying cards, you can think of them as comic book panels, right? Now a comic book panel to, to work and show you a story sequentially, you need to have gutters between them, borders and gutters. And I want that space, and this is your layout challenge now. It's a new kind of challenge for us in digital art. I want your space to be equal. So make sure your, your vertical spaces are the same measurement as your horizontal spaces. So how do you do that? We're going to turn on our grid lines. So if you go to view, you can say show grid. The shortcut for that is command apostrophe. So command apostrophe turns on the grid, command semicolon turns on your guides. I want you to have them both on. Then with that on, you're going to use that grid to make, for the, the eight inches dimension is the easiest, you are just going to push it out one inch on each side, right? That's one full box. So if I turn off the grid, you'll see that. So now I have this even border side to side. Now I need one inch at the top and bottom too. This is a little trickier because mine wasn't an even dimension. So I turn on the grid and I count. There are four of these little Square boxes, I need four of them. So I have two, that's four, and then I have to cut it a little bit. So in order to cut it a little bit, I need basically one and a half here instead of two. I have to go to view and I have to change from snap to grid to uncheck snap to grid. And that will let me go halfway into the grid. So now I have one, two, three and a half, and another half, that's four. And on the bottom, same thing. I have to go one half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four. Now, if I turn off the grid, I no longer need it. I have one inch space there, one inch space there, 
and I have the exact placement of all my other cards locked in. This is a good place to save it. I'm going to say save as. I don't want to overwrite my animation or my stage. So instead, this is assignment number five, final storyboard to the desktop as a Photoshop file. Now, my first, my first panel is easy. That's going to be frame one. Right? And I'm thinking of my storyboard sketch. But this is just the final version of it. My second one, that introduces my character. I could do my next frame, but that only shows the talons of my character. So I might skip a few frames. Maybe frame six, but maybe I want to show the eagle, the creature flying in. That's a good one. Let's use this one. So I'm going to turn on auto select layer so I can just deal them into the right place. At this point, I like to think ahead. Okay, what's the middle of my storyboard? What do I want that to be? And that's the glowing of the, of the barn. So I have 38 frames. The middle of 38 is 18 around there. So that's the beam coming out. So I need to go a little bit before that. Right? Yep. To show the glowing of the barn. So maybe this would be a good middle frame. I'm going to make that red so I know that that's the middle frame I'm committed to. And now I'm going to deal from under the deck. So if that's on, I'm going to turn off auto select layer. And now I need to find the ones that get up to this point that I think look good. Let's try frame 10. Yeah, just barely glowing there. But I don't want the eagle in the same position, necessarily. So this might be a better middle one. Actually, it is a different position. Never mind. I'll keep the original. No, I'll keep that. All right. So you get to decide. And then I need one in between these two. Deal from under the deck. Nope, not frame 10. Sorry, frame 7. Yeah. So it shows that it's landing. It's landed. They, they hug into place because you're snapping to your guides, even if you're not snapping to your grid. And now I can deal from the top of the deck. So I turn on auto select again. And I say, OK, what's next? Well, the bird really has to be captured by it. So I need a really dramatic one. But not sucked in yet. Yeah, really, it might be that one. All right, so we clearly see the change. Now let's start sucking him in. <laughs> My deal from the, from the center now. But I have to tell that story in just a few frames. So they're going to jump a bunch. I think to here, right? And I think this will be my final frame. Okay, then you can hit command semicolon, turn off your guides. See if that tells your story in the way you want it to. I'm not so sold on this one. See, maybe maybe this one would be better. Turn on my guides, put it in the right spot. 
There we go. Or maybe I can go even later. Let's see. Yeah, I think maybe this one. Okay, so once you're happy with it, you are going to save it as your final storyboard as a PSD. You hit save. I want it to maybe be cropped a little bit on the top and bottom. So to make it equally cropped, I hold down option and squeeze in. But it's nice to have a little extra space on the top and bottom than the sides. And this was the only way to actually get my middle frame absolutely centered in Photoshop. The only way for layout in Photoshop is to grow your canvas around it, right? Otherwise you have to place it by hand, which is a, a pain. Okay, so that's my finished storyboard. Save it, and then I'm going to save as a JPEG. That's fewer than five megabytes. We've done that in the past. Save as. Oh, so this is print quality, but it's at a different resolution than we're used to, right? So before I do that, I can show you. So image size now, this is basically 30 by 40 inches. In fact, if I want to make it exactly 30 by 40 inches, which is usually my preference for this, I can go to canvas size and I can say, okay, cut it from the top and make it 40 inches. You can use canvas size to, to crop an image too. It will warn you, but now, actually I wanted to crop it from the bottom, not the top because it's sometimes nice to have a little extra space on the bottom. So I want to crop it to preserve the bottom to 40. It will give me a warning. Good. See, so I think that looks a little bit better. Now I can go to my image size, and I'm going to simply uncheck resample. And instead of 30 by 40, I'm going to make it 8. Right? And so it's 8 by 10 something at 562 well above our 350 standard. So this is print quality, even though your animation is not, because we've shrunk in your animation into nine different frames. And this is a good piece for your portfolio. So I'm going to save it, and then I'm going to save it as a JPEG, and then we're going to upload to PhotoBucket our sketch, our final storyboard, and then our GIF file. So I save as a JPEG, and then in the compression options, I want to make sure it's fewer than five megabytes. So 10 should do it. Oh, 10 doesn't, then 9 should do it. There we go. I can see it there. It's on the desktop. Then you can close it. So how do we upload these things? Well, you're going to go to Assignment 5 GIF Animation. You're going to upload it there. I'm going to upload mine into my instructor demonstrations. The first thing we want to upload is our JPEG sketch. Second thing we want to upload is our final storyboard JPEG. And the third thing we want to upload is our, our GIF file, which is an online file format. Come on. <laughs> Work with me here. There we go. And you'll notice that they tell the story very differently. A storyboard tells a story very differently than your animation does. The animation will show a lot more subtlety. So it's interesting to see them both ways. But your final storyboard has the benefit of being a print portfolio piece for your animation. And then I'm going to put in my storyboard. And then I'm going to put in my GIF file, which I've already tested. And that's all there is to it.